Whether it be the appeal of a lower price or the ability to crack them open and read them more easily, today we're going to talk about five ways a lower grade comic might be better than owning a high grade. Let's get this list started off with the most obvious factor. It's cheaper. Let's say your ideal goal is to get the first appearance of Rogue within the pages of Avengers King Size Annual 10. There's a few options you can go. You can grab the book raw or purchase it already graded and encased in plastic. While it may be massively impressive to own and have bragging rights to a 9.8 white pages of this bad boy, it makes more financial sense to grab a lower grade and preferably even raw. There's an interesting phenomenon that happens when a 1980 key comic peaks into the near mint range, or to use CGC terms, we'll say a 9.2 or higher. The value starts to shoot up at an exponential growth, meaning the closer to that 9.8 and the 9.8 itself is about 10 times the price of even just a very fine or a 8.0. And let's not forget, what we define as impressive is subjective, and the community tends to find a 40-year-old book in very fine condition pretty spectacular. If you opt for a raw copy, the Overstreet Guide and Key Collector prices put the mid-range grades at around 80 bucks, and a high grade's gonna put you around 200. If it's very high, you're gonna be looking at 250. It makes considerable more financial sense to stray from the appeal of the perfect grade and obtain mid-grade raws, or in some cases, even low grade. I picked up a dirt grade low copy with an almost detached cover of this comic for $1 at a flea market. It probably would have gotten a 1.5 on CGC's scale, but frankly it's awesome getting this and to be able to read it and get the feel for it for so cheap, low grade copies are cheaper and still give you a ton of enjoyment. The next factor is readability, especially when it comes to Silver Age or Golden Age books. I can sometimes feel guilty for rifling through the pages of some high-grade raw keys. I recently read my high-grade first appearance of Black Manta, and I was nearly sweating while doing it. But when you buy low-grade, I honestly recommend very low-grade for some of these keys. It's nice to not feel like you're decreasing the value of the item. It's nice to crack it open, feel those pages, smell those smells of that old paper, and just enjoy the comic as it was intended to be enjoyed. High-grade rolls and slabs are very prestigious because we've made them this way. They've become, for lack of a better term, untouchable. And maybe they should be. In my opinion, it's okay to read those comics, but I believe in preserving them no matter the cost. Low-grade beauties offer you the opportunity to be able to read those comics in person without buying a digital copy or the graphic novel. And there is something really magical about reading the actual thing. The next factor is presentability. Hear me out, have you ever seen slapped comics in which sometimes a lower grade looks nicer than the higher grade? Happens to me all the time. I own a copy of Daredevil number one first appearance of Daredevil. CGC came to the grade of a 3.5 on this book, to which I would agree with after reading the grader's notes. The issues mainly lie on the back, one of the staples, and with the interior of the book. The cover, however, is still quite vibrant and with all its intended colors, and just looks pretty sharp, especially for a 3.5. But despite the sharper looking cover, I've seen 5.5s, 6.0s, and even up to 7.0s that have a rougher spine or have lost coloring to the main page of the book. Many times with modern and new keys, I've owned a 9.6 to finally upgrade to a 9.8 and being disappointed because I remember thinking the 9.6 looked crisper. Granted, this issue may be a one-time offshoot and issue with the grading process. However, it has happened a few times. Another example, my first appearance of Black Widow is only a 4.0, yet it looks sharper, judging solely from the cover, than most 6s and even 7s. Because of this presentability option, sometimes the lower grade of the two is the more obvious choice. This brings me to my next point, which is insurance and maintenance. 
Let's say you got a copy of Avengers number four, the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Let's say it's got the grade of a 3.0. Your buddy, on the other hand, has a 9.0 copy of the same book. Guess who's got to pay for a superior storage option and the highest insurance possible? The fair market value of such a high book is sitting pretty at $13,000. The fair market value of the 3.0 is only around $1,800. In order to properly insure your comics, your expenses can really go through the roof when you sit on such high grade gold. Once buying a comic, it doesn't stop there. You have to store it well, preserve it, insure it. When dealing with low grade, many times people don't even feel the pressure to insure it at all. Or when they do, it doesn't break the bank. There's just all these additional maintenance costs that come with having the best of the best. And therefore, just to avoid these costs, one might forego collecting pristine books and get into just grabbing what they want, despite the grade. And this brings us to our final category, and that is just to own the damn thing. Some books have become increasingly difficult in cost, while some books are just getting so old it's tough to find in high grade. To many, it's better just to own the book and lose the stigma of hunting for a pristine copy. My channel name is Mint Hunter Comics because I excel in searching out the high high-grade beauties that exist out there. But that doesn't mean there's not a place in my heart for mid- and low-grade copies. Sometimes it's just better to own the thing and not worry about the condition. Frankly, a lot of times that's the case. If you want the first appearance of Wolverine, don't let anyone tell you there's anything wrong with owning a chewed up 1.0. It's your book. Own it, read it, enjoy it proudly. Isn't it better to have a bunch of cool books than to save up your pennies like a miser trying to wait to drop on a higher grade copy? Because, spoiler alert, the value on these higher grade copies adjust with inflation and the market, and they get more and more expensive every year, so it might be an unachievable goal. Low-grade RAWs do increase in value, but at a much lower rate, and the ability to say that you've got a copy and maybe a wider varied collection is frankly just cooler than owning two or three insanely high-grade keys. Folks, for the average collector and comic fan, it just makes more sense to abandon the stigma of needing to grab the best of the best pristine elite versions. Grab those low grades and enjoy them like an old friend. Let them feed your hunger and love for the hobby own a piece of history rather than being a museum curator or a gatekeeper. Don't forget to subscribe, comment down below. We got the 12,000 subscriber giveaway coming up and you're going to win a PS5. At 15,000 subscribers, one of you, I'm just buying your favorite comic book, up to $500 value. And in the spirit of giving, I said I was going to be doing a members only giveaway and I am going to give this copy of this classic KKK Black Panther issue to one of the members that joined this week. So congrats to Martin Brandt. You've won this great classic Black Panther issue. And as always, my friends, keep on hunting.